We're going to have some real fun today. We're making a Jacob's Ladder for ionizing argon gas. And then we're expelling it down the end of a long tube. What could be cooler than this? We're also going to have fun using Tesla coil power to ionize argon. What could be more fun than this? Today we will be studying how you ionize argon gas to do lots of many clever things. The easiest way to ionize argon gas is to use two ignition coils at 40 kilovolt DC and put red and black wires on either side of a tube and then it makes a Jacob's Ladder effect as we'll see in just a minute. When we turn on the 40 kilovolt DC at about 12 volts to these ignition coils first you can hear a hissing sound because the non-conductive air is being ionized slightly. Next when we add argon gas from the supply let's watch what happens. The argon gas is much more conductive and easily ionizable than air so it makes a current between the two electrodes and we get a kind of Jacob's ladder effect as we increase the flow. Next, we're going to add 10 kilovolt AC from this small neon sign transformer near these two leads. You can again hear the buzzing and humming as the air itself gets ionized. Let's add some argon gas now and see what happens. Here comes the argon gas. We've again got a nice Jacob's ladder effect using AC power from a neon sign transformer as well as DC power. When we turn up the flow of argon gas, the Jacob's ladder goes way up the electrodes. Now a third way to ionize argon gas is to use high frequency wireless power from a Tesla coil. This is at 10 watts, 39 volts. The argon is coming through this tube and there's a wire from the top of the Tesla coil coming into the flow of argon and it's ionizing it quite brightly. This is now with 25 watts of power going through the Tesla coil through that little wire at the same flow rate. And when we increase the flow of argon, we get ionization everywhere through the tube. The daylight view of the experiment we just did. This is your Tesla coil with a primary and a secondary. Out of the top of the secondary, this wire comes down into these plastic tubes. And it mixes with, mixes with argon gas from this supply here. It ignites the argon and ionizes it, which makes a glow. The Tesla coil itself has two power supplies. Five volts drives this NPN PNP dual transistor driver, which is very stable. It also has a 12 volt Zener diode protecting it. Everything else is like in an earlier video. And those turn it on and off three or four MOSFETs to give a lot of power for this supply circuit when we turn it on. It comes on at about 17 volts and you can see wireless power comes out of that wire into a light bulb and it'll go up to about 50 volts, 25 watts, It'd be quite bright. We put a permanent magnet 
under this Tesla coil we get a really big flame that's with the shiny side up when we take away the magnet the flame is somewhat less still at 30 volts with the magnet below we can see the ionized argon gas really shooting out without a magnet below he seems to be moving the flow of the gas but not shooting out quite as much Another thing we can do is to put two strong north south permanent magnets on each side of the tube which is ionizing argon gas. Then we can see that all of the plasma is confined to a cylinder which goes vertical between the magnets just like in a tokamak reactor. They spiral up and down past the north south magnetic field lines. If I put 40 kilovolt DC lead on the left, that black wire, and have it interact with the plasma flame as it comes out. You can see it actually reduces the ionization and sends power the wrong way. And if I turn it off again, the flame comes back. Turn it on again, the flame goes away. Turn it off again, the flame comes back. Instead, if I put a red plus 40 kilovolt DC lead on the left in the plasma exhaust, let's watch what happens. Turn up the DC power. Now the flame flows more strongly and arcs with the DC power. So it accelerates to the left. Turn it off, goes down again. Turn the red wire on again, goes up again. Finally, if on the left we place the AC lead at 10 kilovolt from a neon sign transformer, we just see a general spark between the two AC sources if the flame doesn't get bigger or less.